Okay guys, I'm going to try this. I've never done it before, at least not from my grooming shop. <laughs> so this is Deb Live from Best in Show Pet Grooming in York, Pennsylvania. And that's best. That's actually a Best in Show based on my pet grooming, guys. I'm not trying to flaunt my abilities here, although I have had Best in Show dogs that I've groomed, as you know. All right, so Kira had her bath earlier today. Troy's already been bathed, and then I've got two grungies here walking about that are just visiting with me. That's a Polish bread springer. And as I announced earlier, this is going to be my victim for the day. This is Mr. Nova, and he's a Liam son, bred from a Connor daughter of mine that I co-own with Ann Halsey. Yes, and you can, oh my God, look at that. You can see Liam. Sadie. But um, as we're all overdue for haircuts, um, I think he walked in today with all this, so I thought that this would be a great opportunity to do feet. Feet, hocks, extra hair on the legs. So join me while I do this. Okay, now he is just in a pet trim. I mean, certainly show quality, but as usual, they can't all go into show homes. So he's just in a nice pet trim. <laughs> I'm going to try to get all the right angles here. And I'm probably even going to move the phone off of this stand. And here I'll show you. Look what I jerry-rigged up for you guys today. <laughs> Is that great? So we shall see if I can't get this turned around. And then the phone on here because it definitely has to have a downward position to it, doesn't it? Be able to show feet if I don't trip over this cord. I'm not going to be able to hear anybody yell and scream if they can't see what I'm doing because I don't have this at the right angle. I've asked Patrick to come out and join me as soon as he can, and he will, but we will do muddle through the best we can. <laughs> okay, so if you've gotten any of my DVDs, we all know, single edge thinning shears, I swear by these, this is all I use, are the double duck curved shear. That's it. I mean, show, show me where on this dog that he has a straight line. He doesn't. It's organic. He's round everywhere, so, you know, use round scissors. Your typical, you know, Belgium comb. You guys all have these. And you'll see other things that I flip in and flip out. Now, the most important thing to doing a foot, I don't care if it's a pet foot, and we all know the only difference between a pet trim and a show trim is the length of feathering that you might leave for a pet. And their backs are shaved with a clipper instead of being done by hand. Other than that, it's... The identical trim, at least it should be, if you're doing it right. Now, of course, I'm getting all mixed up here with stuff on the floor. Okay, now, I'm going to try to move him. should probably have him on the swinging table. Let's see. If I can move this over. Okay, now, I like to use... A 30 blade for under here. Of course, I like, I prefer the wireless. Nova. And you don't need to go hog wild. Just get what you can. Remember, springers have webbing in their toes. So never, never, never go in with a scissor or a clipper into the web part of the toe. <laughs> You're going to end up, you know, hurting the dog. So that's it for that one. I, if anybody is horsey, I call this the frog. If you ever cleaned a hoof out of a horse, my sister and I grew up with horses, owned horses, had horses our whole lives, till the dogs overtook us. But this is identical to cleaning out the hoof of a horse when you raise it up. Because all you want to do 
is just get out that V. Never, never, never go up in there with a clipper. You're going to end up getting the webbing of the foot. <laughs> you can deal with me moving all this around. I guess I can deal with you guys here. Okay. So, now let's get Mr. Nova's face up out of our way. And no, no animals are going to be hurt while filming this film. All right. So the main thing for a show dog is toenails. All right. Now, he's a pet. We're all overdue with everything because of this COVID pandemic. Um, his toenails are way, way, way too long for a show dog. Obviously, you could never even do a show trim foot with toenails like this. So I did those nails before the bath. So I figured I'd leave these then for after the bath. We all know how to do toenails. You see the quick where it's red. You see the white where it's not. So because he's overdue, I'm going to start. And I'll tell you, I never, never, never use these guillotine nail clippers because I do everything with the Dremel. But in a case like this, you have to take off that half inch that's sticking out. And you go against the edges, round it off, and then knock off the front. Round the edges, knock off the front. I'm going to put Kira up here. Her nails are not this bad. I also don't remember if this dog has an oval or a round foot. It's been so long since I've <laughs> groomed anybody, I don't remember. Uh, Kira's feet are absolutely perfectly round. And probably the most perfect Springer foot I've ever seen. Now, I'm just trying to get that out of my way. Here's a nice trick, especially if you use the waz. I put it... We all know that these go up and down from about a 9 up to a 30, anything in between. I take it on the, lo the longest, and I go right up the side of this foot. And, of course, now the blade's not going to work. Okay. Right up the side of that foot. right up the side. Again, on Kira, she's not so grown out, so you'll be able to see more of what I'm doing. The other thing is you have to keep all this hair in between the toes combed out and not matted. That's going to be your biggest <coughs> problem when and if <coughs> you have a dog that you need to do the um, feet by. So, yeah, I guess you can see it. All right, now like I said, a curved shear. Everything about this foot is round. I just, I, this is all I've used for 30, 30, 35, 40 years now. I don't use straight shears. I use curved shears because it's a curved foot and it's a round foot. <coughs> so just very carefully. Now, we have the regular hair that's here on the foot. So any of this here, I need to match to this length. You don't want to go below, below it. So right now, I'm just going to get off the extras. Like I said, he's not a show dog, so he's not used to all this kind of prim and proper stuff, if you will. This is where, now, if you take these scissors and you turn them around and use that, there's your straight shear. Look at that for a nice trick. So that's what I'm doing. Stop. Okay, now the most important thing I didn't bring over. There's a million brands of these, of these little, what I call, this is my foot shear. These nice little foot shears. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Keep coming over here to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. Anyway, I don't want to artificially smash that hair in, but at the same time, I don't want to pull it out. I just want it to be where it's going to be, because you get this dog in the show ring, and that hair is just going to lay 
where it's going to lay. Just very carefully, I'm going to start to just get some of that off of that foot. Okay, I can tell you right now, it's likely that this dog's got an oval foot. Which by the AKC breed standard is fine. Now in the 1960s when I first started with Springers, it was not fine. A Springer had to have a round foot. But then we got into one of those decades where we were up, we call it updating the breed standard. Updating, yeah, right, changing the breed standard. And it's typically a let's change it because this is what all my dogs have now. Not because it's necessarily better for the breed, but it's that's what everybody's got. That's what everybody's got. Now, you see this here, and I'm hoping you can. Anyway, I'm just going to take these thinning shears and go on top. And again, you never, never, never want to go under like that. You're going to leave big holes. So I'm just very lightly... I know. I mean, typically I would do this foot in about less than two minutes. So me farting around here is not going to be pleasant for this dog because he's not used to it. And I want to make sure you guys can see. Okay. Now, this is where the real work comes in. And that's when I'm using these. Yeah, let me see. Okay, now, there's the toenail. So I'm just going to very carefully pull that out and take that off. Now, stop. And then I'm going to roll all that hair. I hope you can see what I did there. Stop. I rolled it, and I just went in there. I'm not going to cut any of that at all. Nothing. I'm not going to touch it. So I roll that, I know, Noah, Noah, or Nova. I got a Noah and a Nova. Okay, eight. Then I'm gonna roll this, and just what I rolled off the top, whoa, what I rolled off the top, stop. Yeah, you can see that, stop, stop. I may just have to do this quick without explaining what I'm doing and then go into the explanation when I have Kira up here. Not that she's going to love it, but she'll certainly understand what I'm doing. Where this dog doesn't at all. Stop. I guess you can still see that. Okay, see, I can't, I can't get, there's, there's the toenail. It's in my way. So that's why I like to pick up the foot and I pull all that hair away from the nail. You can see what I'm doing. And then I cut it. And all that hair away from the nail. And then I cut it. And again, I'm just cutting the hair that would normally go around the nail. I'm not doing anything else. He just happens to have way more than the average dog would because we are so overdue around here for dog grooming. I don't know, everybody's writing so I can't see the screen because everything that you're writing is popping up over the screen. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of actually trimming this foot up in the air. <laughs> and every time you pick up this foot, it's going to change shape because the dog's weight isn't on the foot. So you've got to be very careful not to do that. You're going to want to do your foot sculpturing, if you will with the dog's normal weight on this foot. Okay, and again, because he's got really, really, really long nails, I'm going to opt. 
since the AKC breed standard allows him to have an oval foot, I am going to let it be an oval foot. I could probably make it a lot tighter to a rounder foot, perhaps. If I had these nails out of the way. But why bother when both are perfectly acceptable? Okay, now to the side. Okay, breed standard. Oh, just you cannot groom a Springer unless you know your breed standard. It's it, period. You are grooming this dog, quote unquote, to fit that breed standard. So if the breed standard says that they should have you know, a, a straight, okay, a straight, let's go pick it up, okay, we're just going to go straight up, I call this the D, yes, I do trim out just that D, that's it, straight up, on both sides. And yes, there is that little bit of hair in there that I'll get. All right, so now you see a straight pastern. All right, hope you can see that. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, <laughs> so I'm going to go through the next foot without any stops or without any explanation and just go boom, 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 the way I normally would. Okay, so I want to make sure that there's no mats, which I already did before the bathtub. I made sure that there was no matting before the bathtub. Way, way, way too much hair here. So I'm just going to go across the top. Now, this is where I can get this part of the foot done. I don't want to do that with a clipper. All this is webbing. What do I mean by webbing? Just that. See that? That's webbing, just like you'd put on those frog feet to go out in the ocean or in your pool. All that's webbing. Why? Because these dogs swim. Why? Because they're hunting dogs. Why? Because you shoot birds over the ponds and the dogs have to go in after them and they have to swim. And what if they're in there with a 20 pound goose that's wet? So yes, they have to have webbing on their feet. And again, I am only it's hard to tell because he's got so much hair. Stop. I'm not anywhere near this foot. You can see all that. I don't you dare, 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 ever, ever, ever cut. Try to trim a foot when it's up in the air like that. So all I'm doing is taking the hair off the top of the toenail and going right up there. Stop. Taking the hair off the top of the toenail you guys can see this. This is so important. Right into there. That's it. That's all I'm doing. Off the top of the toenail to this side. Off the top of the toenail to that side. Come on. Come on. There we go. Yeah, I guess you can see that. It's hard for me to tell. Okay, now just very, very carefully, ever so carefully. Back with my round shears. Yes, I allow him to put the natural weight of his foot back down after every one or two cuts so I can see what I'm doing. I can see that that needs to go. See that that needs to go. Look at this guy back here. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's ugly. So let's get it off there. And for sure, that needs to go. Yep, we're good. Okay, probably still here. I have a real gravelly voice. 
I wake up all gravelly voiced and sweaty every morning. I don't know what it is. They tested me for strep, that came back negative. Tested me for COVID, that came back from negative. And I'm not, I'm not prone to these kinds of, um, I don't have any allergies. Not this kind of allergies. So I don't know, I don't know what this is that I have, but it's pretty relentless. I can't throw it off, whatever it is. And yes, we are getting false negatives on the COVID tests. I agree, I understand, but you know, I'm not so bad that I'm in the hospital. So, you know, count my blessings and all that. So, all right, again, straight pastern. All right, this is again where I can take care of this hair that I left after I clippered it. Stop. There's that D, D for Deborah, D for dog. Okay, there's your pastern. Just go straight up like that. I have shown dogs that do not have good straight pasterns. And just by trimming them, I can give it the appearance to the judge that the dog has a nice straight pastern. Sorry, but that is the name of the game. Right, you've got three minutes to sell your dog to the judge, and I've got three minutes to sell my dog to the judge. And the gasoline in my car and the credit card at my hotel cost me just as much as yours did, so I'm gonna take that three minutes and do the best I can. Again, this is just a pet trim, so I'm just gonna get this hair off of the wet ground for her. Now, here's one thing that I get asked a lot. Let's see if I can, you guys need to stop writing so I can, I guess it even says when you're watching, okay. Because all I, all I see, all this, what the hell do you do with all that? That's a really good question. Um, if you use thinning shears, it's gonna look like crap. I know, so. You can't really use thin shears. And I'm a firm believer, anything you can do with a clipper, do with a clipper. Because a clipper is gonna leave <coughs> a smoother area than anything you could ever do by hand. Okay, let's see. Okay, I always call these gorilla arms. All this, what the hell do you do with all this extra hair? He had it here too. So, this is a 5F, and I'm not pushing up against his leg. I'm using it to sculpture over top. That's all I'm doing. I'm sculpturing. And if he had gorilla legs here, I know some springers that have gorilla legs. No, nope. that have gorilla legs the whole way down. And you could do the same thing. I don't know, maybe one of these laying around on my floor today has that, and I'll stick it up here and show you. I don't know. Then, let's see if I can get this right. Should probably just have his ears up with the, where are we? There, okay. All right. Then here, yes. You do take your thinning shears and just one, two, one, two, one, two. Don't go in there and hack, hack, hack. You're gonna end up leaving a great big hole. Whenever you're using these thinning shears, it's just one, two. Never take more than two strikes of a thinning shear in one spot, ever. So it's one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and then stop comb and see what you've got and just by doing that now i almost got it where i want so now i'm just going to go in with onesies stop all right so hopefully i don't know what angle that is but hopefully hopefully you can see just by taking the hair off now you've pulled this whole elbow in 
because this is what the judge sees. Judge has got three minutes to look at your dog. That's it. That's what the AKC gives him, three minutes. So, yeah, a lot of it's optical illusion. Of course it is. Your best groomers are optical illusion artists, of course. So know your standard and then take the dog that you have in front of it, in front of you, and groom that dog to your best ability to meet that standard. Okay, now we have fuzzies over there. So you can see on that elbow how nice and slick, and this one, all this gorilla hair is sticking out again. So it's not as bad as the other one was, so I just will use a thinning shear here. A lot of times I like to believe that less is more. So less of this hair you have, better this dog is going to look. Okay, and again, I don't know if you can see, but I just saw I didn't like this. So I'm going to take that off. And there's the pastern on the inside. Pastern on the inside. Now, of course, if I'm at home getting ready for the dog show, I'm not going to do this super, super tight because a lot's going to change before, after a bath, when the dog travels. So don't get any of your grooming so tight that you don't have hair left um, when you get to the dog show. And then if it's a five-day dog show, it's really going to make you crazy because then you're going to have to have every day, you're going to redo that dog and find more hair. Now for these, I'm just going to do like a, yep, I did. Okay, for these, gross things. I'm just going to do a speed trim here. Again, the foot is round. And I'm going to just get all this awkward stuff off here. Now on, on the back feet, the back feet for a Springer have always been oval. Even back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Back foot is generally oval. So I am not I'm going to trim these in such a way that I'm not going to show the toenail at all. I mean, that's just ugly. On the front feet, it, you can get away with it. It looks okay. And for this dog, because his toenails are so long, I didn't have a choice. But it looks fine. But for back here, boy, you show the toenail, it's really ugly. Now, you're also going to notice that when I'm trimming this back foot, I don't pick it up at all. Why? because I'm not doing that little ledge over the toenail. I don't want to show the toenail on the back foot. I am gonna pick it up though to go under here. My head's probably in the way, but. Okay, now I'm gonna move the dog again. stuff I don't need. Oh my god, look at these. Okay, can you guys see these? We've got a Clydesdale here. This is not a Springer, this is a Clydesdale. Now we also know, what's the breed standard say? About the hindquarters, moderate angulation. So you start from and then back to the top of the hawk. So there's your, there's your thirds. Okay, now, this is what this dog really does look like. Okay, there to there to there. So, this is not a long hawk. Okay, there to there to there. Actually, he's in perfect, perfect proportion. However, we have got our, our AKC American judges wanting to see a very short hawk. And the only way to do that is to trim it so it looks short and again he's got all this gorilla hair so i'm just going to skim over the top get the gorilla hair out 
Okay, rule of thumb is we've all got our Belgium combs. Hope you can see what I'm doing, right? Look at all this depth. So again, I'm gonna pull it out naturally. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sculpture. I'm going to sculpture this down. I'm not even gonna say that I'm gonna trim it. That would be a bad word. Okay, I'm just gonna sculpture it down. So now, what have we done here? I'll tell you what, I'm going to move this table a little bit more like this. So I don't have a white hawk up against a white. Okay, so again, all I've done was sculptured. I'll show you the inside of the leg on the other leg in a minute here. Let me just get all this off. course he's in a pet trim so all this is short but we can pretend that all this was nice long hair that was now flowing over these nice pretty hawks anyway so there that's it that's a show hawk but where is the dog's bone okay look how deep that is see how deep that is right and again, when the dog moves in the ring, it's still going to stay like that, especially if you've trimmed it, if you've sculptured it to be that way. And then if he had long hair that was trimmed to here, you could see the judge would only see that part of the hawk. But again, to move properly and be a proper springer, you want one third, one third, and one third. <laughs> but if you walked into the ring, with your hocks done up against the bone, you wouldn't even walk out with a fourth place ribbon in a one dog class. I mean, the judge is just gonna look at that and go, oh my God, what is that? Well, it's called a hock, and it's called one third share of the rear end that makes the dog correctly move, but we have the judges trained to see our grooming and not the bone structure of the dogs. But that's how it is, folks. Okay, this one we didn't do. So here hopefully you'll be able to see just you get, again, the frog of the foot is what I call it. Especially, I just go one, two, one, two. Don't dig it all out. You're gonna make the dog sore. Especially if you're using like a 30 blade like I was. Then the rest of it, I just trim off with the scissors. I know, pets just aren't used to this. I get it. All right, so. And again, when you take these scissors and you turn them this way, you end up with a straight shear. This way I don't have to keep putting shears up and putting shears down and picking up this shear and picking up that shear. I can make the shear do both. Which is what I like to do. Okay, now we're back around to that. Okay, and again, just very lightly. Okay, over top. You can see I, I changed the position of this scissors from here to here. Why? To match the roundness of the dog. Dog is round. <sighs> okay. 
and again for the back feet because they're allowed to be oval I am not going to go hog wild and show any of the toenails I think that's an ugly look anyway oh dear I don't know if I can do this and not be in your way doing it angle that I have to work at Yeah, she could pick it up and go in there. Huh. Oh, look at this. Gorilla, gorilla hair, gorilla hair. Gorilla hair. That's a 5F. Anybody wants to know. And I'm just skimming over the top. I'm not pushing. Quicker. I did not have to worry about being in the way of the camera. I'd say for people that are just starting to do feet, I would probably suggest that you finish them off with a thinning shear on the top. And look how careful I am. I'm going down and pulling instantly up. The minute I go like this, I'm popping up. That's so I don't have any accidental pulse of pushing down into the natural length of the hair. Of course, the whole point is to make it look as natural as possible. Okay, here we go, the Clydesdale effect again. Yeah, I guess you can see that. Um, remember, there's the bone of the hawk, gang. There it is. We're not going anywhere near that. No sorry. Oh, the other thing that people do really, really wrong, the way we did the pastern in the front, never, never, never do that back here. My God, no. As a matter of fact, that just, that should just be flat along the ground. Okay, I'm gonna have to sneak over here. I don't know if I can do this. It's a weird side that I'm working on. Yes, I turn my scissor around again to have a straight edge. So, I'm not combing it up like you would a poodle. I'm just kind of letting it come out and down where it naturally would lay. Because when the dog's down on the ground, it's running around the show ring. That's where the hair is going to be. So that's what you trim it to. And then this straight, straight across the bottom. Never, never up. Stop, stop. Well, he's got more hair on this side, so you could see, we could all pretend here that he's a nice show dog with lots of dangly hair off the back. Anyway, and if he was, let's see. Let's see what you guys see. Yeah, then all this would come down. All this nice black hair would probably come down to about there, and this is what the judge would see. The judge would see a hawk like that. But where in reality is it? Look. There's the top of the hawk where my foot is, where my finger is, right up against that bone. See? And you go one third, one third of the stifle, and one third up here. That's what you want. But that's not the way you're going to groom it. So, this is one of those few instances where you don't groom to the breed standard. This is one of those instances where you groom to what we have optically taught our judges to see. Okay, well, 
that's it for that. Like, he's, like I said, he's in a he's in a pet trim. Let's see if we can get you to turn around, my love. Yep, Nova. Another thing I want to point out here, the top of this grooming table is not just your regular surface grooming table. Okay, most of these dogs have to be up here for a long, long time. This is just one of those um, exhaustion mats, the fatigue mats that you can get. And that's what I have up here. I have this on the surface of every grooming table that I own, I will ever own. And it really, it keeps, keeps itself very clean. I just wipe it off with Clorox at the end of the day. And it gives the dog a much better surface to stand on rather than those gnarly just tops. Okay, so now we got feet. <laughs> 